Of the many truths about right-wing media that these Dominion filings have laid bare, one stands out as particularly informative about the way that entire ecosystem works. It's one that a lot of people haven't picked up on, but take a second. Because there's an almost foundational asymmetry between traditional media outlets, which care about accuracy, actual reporting, and conservative media outlets like Fox, which only tell their audience what they want to hear. And there are two examples from these latest filings I think highlight that disparity really well. The first is in an email from a senior executive producer in Tucker Carlson's show. He's forwarding a clip of none other than NBC News correspondent Steve Kornacki at the big board discussing the election results in Arizona. Quote, this explainer from Kornacki at MS is really good, worth watching. And my reaction reading that was, yes, <laughs> it is. He's very good at explaining things. Despite all their lies about the so-called fake news liberal media, when the cameras are turned away, when they're talking in private, Fox News producers understand that what Steve Kornacki says is trustworthy. It's not propaganda. It's not spin. He's trying to get to the facts in good faith. And the second example is similar. It's from that weird period right after the election. We were all waiting for the 2020 results to finish trickling in. We didn't know what was going to happen. The president of Fox Business texts another executive, quote, I know Arizona's tightening, but I'm seeing reports that some of the latest votes to be counted will be Biden votes. A few texts later, that second executive replies, quote, where are those reports? Hadn't seen that. To which the president responds, quote, Full disclosure, the last article I read about it was a New York Times article, LOL, which in turn elicits, quote, ha, well, <laughs> I love this exchange. That's the whole story. Forget about all the Dominion stuff. Forget about, uh, you know, all the, all the private back and forth and news side hits. This is it. This is it, right? On the one hand, those executives are clearly kind of embarrassed to be citing their sworn nemesis in New York Times, in their view, the outlet that most represents the biased liberal media. On the other hand... They need reliable information about the election results to do their job, and they fundamentally understand that is what the New York Times does and does quite well. Because there is no right-wing alternative to the New York Times. And about 15 years ago, there was someone who very astutely identified this asymmetry, someone who knew that the hardcore political right didn't have its own rigorous journalistic institutions that could just produce reliable, trustworthy information for people. And it was someone who wanted to solve that problem. If you create a news organization whose primary objective is not to deliver accurate news, you will fail. You will fail. The New York Times is a liberal paper, but it's also, and it is to its core a liberal paper, it's also a paper that cares about whether they spell people's names right. By and large, it's a paper that actually cares about accuracy. Conservatives need to build institutions that mirror those institutions. That are, that's, that's the truth. You don't believe me? The New York Times? You don't think? The booze. The booze. Now, I disagree vehemently with Tucker Carlson's assessment of bias in the New York Times. It is not a liberal paper. His point, though, that the political right lacks credible journalism is well taken. That video right there, Tucker getting booed at CPAC for having the temerity to say this obvious truth, might as well be his villain origin story. You see, he had just come off a series of professional humiliations. His second cable news show at as many networks had recently been canceled. So Carson was looking to pursue a new venture. His big project at the moment that he was launching was a new website called The Daily Caller. It was going to be his conservative answer to The New York Times, the kind of project he had tried to soft launch at CPAC a year prior. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. As Alex Shepard writes the New Republic, quote, when he launched the Daily Caller in 2010, Carlson vowed it would primarily be a news site with a straightforward approach to the news. Find out what's happening and tell you about it. We plan to be accurate, both in the facts we assert and the conclusions we imply. There wasn't an audience. Within a few months, it was publishing fake news and outrage-driven commentary. The transformation of the Daily Caller is the Rosetta Stone moment of Carlson's career, a period during which he learned his lesson. He never sought respectability again. In hindsight, that CPAC speech you heard a moment ago was a harbinger of what was to come. And not just about these particular characters in this story. It's about the entire epistemic universe that almost half the country exists in. The audience booing Tucker for daring to suggest that the right should care about accurate news shows how little appetite there was for that kind of fact-based reporting. Tucker learned where the money was. The Daily Caller became 
virtually indistinguishable from fringe far-right outlets like Breitbart. Carlson's next TV venture became something akin to Alex Jones' Infowars on Fox News. What Carlson and his buddies at Fox understand more than anything is where their audience is, where their bread is buttered. Can't run a profitable business selling accurate reporting to the right-wing base. At least no one's done it yet. They don't appear to want it. They don't read it or watch it. There is no money in it. You see that understanding on display all over these filings. Seasoned Fox veterans, even supposedly reputable ones like Brett Baer, positively freaking out over the network calling Arizona for Biden, which they got right. Or one of the reporters fact-checking Trump when he was lying. Don't do that. Because they understand that if they start doing anything other than telling their audience only what they want to hear, their audience will abandon them. And I wish we lived in a world, I truly do, where we had basically what Tucker envisioned, responsible, fact-based, conservative mass media. There's a few tiny outlets, but we don't. And that is why, when the chips are down, when everything's confusing and chaotic in those days after the election, who do Fox employees turn to? Steve Kornacki and the New York Times.